Fenton and I'm an aeromodeler and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I show you some of the techniques used in scale aeromodeling. Hello again modelers. Today uh, we're going to continue with the Oster, DB Sport and Scale Oster. And what we'll do today is we're going to look at uh, sheathing the area behind the cowling, but uh, around the, the front of the cockpit area. We're going to sheathe it in litho plate, uh, so we'll, you'll see how I cut it and shape it and attach it. And also we're going to put rivets into the panels before we attach them. Now normally I'd apply rivets with glue dots and stuff like this, but this is fifth scale. So, and as we're putting litho plate on anyway, we may as well add the rivets to it. Here you can see what we've already done on the Oster. I've put a panel on the bottom, wrapped it round. And then I've put one piece on the side, added the rivet details, and that's wrapped underneath. Now you'll see that there's a, a lip where the 64th ply came over the top of the surface. I'll show you how that's dealt with on the other side. Now if we look at the other side, you see where I haven't put the, uh, the section on yet, you'll see the 64th ply comes down over the balsa block that forms this section here. So that step where the 64th ends or the 32nd I should say, 32nd ply ends, what we'll do is we'll put the lift plate in here but we'll bring it right up to that lip so that it makes it flush. Then when we put the sheeting over the top we'll overlap slightly onto the lift plate that's on the lower section then put a row of rivets where the two overlap and that should look pretty realistic. Okay so first of all we start by getting a sheet of paper and making a pattern now this is the piece I did for the other side and I thought I'd just see how accurate it was for this side. Because you never know. And it's not quite accurate on this side. And the only discrepancy is where the, the top line is. The side is more or less the same but actually because it's slightly bigger I think I can modify this one by just taking it to about there. That's, that's good. And then all I'll do up at the top here is use my fingernail initially to start it and then you can see where the pencil line is going to go. So what I'll do is I'll go and cut that out, I'll make that amendment there, cut the paper out, we'll try it once more. Okay so I've modified the template, let's just see how well it fits, so that goes up against the plywood at the top, comes down, overlaps at the bottom and gives us a nice joint along there. No, that's perfect, so just going to make a mark on here, this is the outside. Now we go over to the other bench, transfer this to the litho plate and cut it out. Okay, so here we have our template that we just took from on the model. And we'll pick up a piece of litho plate here. That I'm gonna use, yeah, this one here. Can we get it out of there? Not quite. Really close, but not quite. No banana. Could get it out of there, I suppose. It's a bit. Anyway, put some spectacles on so I can actually see what the hell I'm doing. I line up that edge on that edge there, and then all I do for this, put a little mark. Where I'm going, this stuff, and there we have it. Okay, so hopefully, you can see what I'm doing. I have a handful of scalpel blades here, or scalpel knives here with handles, um, and they're in different states of sharpness, so I only tend to use the older blades 
for this work that I'm doing just here. So two light scores. I've shown you shown you this several times already. I hate to see litho plate cut with shears or scissors. Um, curves the edges, makes them more wrinkly, and um, ah, just. You know, you've then got to try and flatten it and straighten it. Um, if at any point you um, decide you want to polish the litho plate and use it as a polished panel, uh, if you've ever, ever had a wrinkle in it or a crease somewhere in it, you'll never get rid of it again. So my feeling is that you try and keep the metal as flat as possible for the whole time. But as you can see, there's a little wrinkle just there. But anyway. So all you do is just bend it along the line, both ways, not much. And you can see, eventually, you do that and it'll pop. You can then kind of tear it to the joint, to the next joint. Usually fold that very slightly, just a bit. Not enough to crease it, but enough to flex it. And it'll go. You can go to the next piece, but um, I think I've done this in a strange way, really. I'm going to do this piece next. So I'll just bend it gently backwards and forwards. This end will go first. And then when it goes, you can sort of tear it down to the joint that you want. Then you're left with this one. So I'm going to Go along here first, put along here. Now you think this isn't going to work because there's a line across there, but you watch. That happens. Go to that. And then, oops, I creased it there. That was my fault. That was an error. Not a very good example. It shouldn't have happened. I rushed. But anyway, there we have that. Now what you can do to get rid of that, take something very flat, on a very clear surface, just rub it over the top, and that will normally get rid of it. But you see what my point is, the minute you get a, a wrinkle in it, even though it appears flat afterwards, you'll never get rid of it. It's there, you know, it's there forever. This is quite a useful tool, and I use it a lot when burnishing down either aluminium foil or lithoplate. And sometimes you can use this to gently rub away any creases. Doesn't always work. But you can see that's more or less got rid of that now, which is great. There's a little one at this end as well. This wasn't incurred, caused by me. This was um, already there from a previous bit of cutting. But there we go, the, the metal's nice and clear now. So the first thing we need to do to this, I've shown this on several occasions, but it's quite important. So, oops, open the nozzle. You need to use a bit of acetone. To clean, clean the surface ink or whatever it is. Off, off the litho plate. If you don't do this, then the, um, the CA glue and other glues won't stick. So it's a very important step to do this. Okay. So next, we're going to Look at the rivets. Now here's our pattern, and this is telling us that this side is out. Now if I go back to the aeroplane, this is the outside, so the rivets need to be on the inside. So this is the outside. Now I really meant to do it so that the 
shiny side was on the outside, but it actually it doesn't matter because this aircraft's going to be painted anyway, so it makes uh, makes no matter. Um, so what we'll do is this is the top where it meets the um, the, the combing for the cockpit for the instrument panel combing, and then this is the bottom bit. And this is the small cutout for clearing the undercarriage. So what we we'll do is we'll mark out on here where we need the rows of rivets. So at the top, I'll put them on, but we actually don't need them at this point. Ones at the back, at the bottom rather, we do need these, and these go over the top of the panel that is at the bottom. So you carry on marking out the areas that um, require rivets. And I've referenced the other side, to be honest, because I worked out the spacings and it's, um, it would look funny if one side didn't match the other. So what I've done is I've tried to space the rivets evenly apart but it is very important that you have rivets on the intersections of panel lines and the corners. If you look on the full size, this is definitely the case. So you can't be just using a ruler and saying, right, every five or every centimeter I'm gonna put a mark. That's not how it works. Um, what you have to do is you have to sort of divide the section you've got. See that one there? I couldn't get four in there, but I can get three, which would give us four sections. So if I go in the middle and halve it again, that gives us a pretty good spacing. This one here, I can't do that, so I'm going to go just in thirds. Okay, coming down here, again, thirds is the best, and down here. We've marked it all out how we want it. Um, just put a piece of very thick paper underneath this. So I really don't want to uh, cause the bench finish to affect the finish on this side. Okay, so if you can see clearly now, what I'm going to use, I have two tools for this. The first one, which I don't know whether you can see, is a piece of piano wire with a rounded end. Okay, then the other tool is a piece of brass tube with the end rounded off a little bit. And what we do is we take a hitting implement. I'm just going to use a heavy pair of pliers here. They don't need to be that heavy. Um, but a small tapping hammer or something like that would be perfect. So all you do is on your intersection, give it a tap. And you remember you're going from the outside that from the inside out so this is creating a little raised dimple on the outside of the panel and it doesn't doesn't need to be much a bit more than that one was but it doesn't need to be much and you just go you continue all the way around the panel following your, uh, your markings. So there we have our, our markings. If you flip it over, you can barely see them, but they are there. It's easier to see when you do it the other way around. So then you take your tube and you put it over the raised bit. And what it does is it creates a small circle and it also knocks down the aggressive nature of the dimple. It's going to be very difficult to see from this side. But it is very effective. I find there's nothing worse than seeing 
a model that's been riveted as if it was a battleship. The rivets on full-size aircraft aren't very big, certainly not very pronounced really. And you see them, or well, you'd notice that they weren't there if they weren't there, but they don't want to be in your face which I have seen a few models where the, the rivets are the bits that stand out straight away. Now you can't probably see very much there, but that's exactly the effect I want. I don't want it to look you know, too pronounced, but they want to be there. You'll see them, they'll be there once you get paint on this and uh, they'll they'll leap out at you. Okay, so what we now, now need to do is, the way I'm attaching these on this model, and I'm trying it for a first time, is I'm actually using a carpet double-sided tape on this side and then attaching it to the aircraft with the double-sided tape. But what I'm going to do, and what I found the other panels have suffered a little bit that the edges are lifting. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put the carpet tape on the inside. Then the edges, I can always see any of those down if they don't seem to be going down well. So this is the carpet tape I'm using. It's just a cheap double-sided carpet tape. Just down as, as a double you know, multi-purpose type material. Um, it's terrible when you get it on your scissors because it sticks to them. The next time you cut something, it causes chaos. Remember, I'm just trying to keep the very edges clear Use a sharper knife, one of my sharper scalpels. One of the guys in Australia uh, uses this for his very large models and has great success with it, so uh, I thought I'd give it a try. I'm not totally convinced. Uh, as I say, the edges haven't stuck down very well, so we'll just have to see. There it goes. Oh, so we just got this last section to remove. Right. Now what we'll do is we'll take this over to the model and fit it. So this is coated in polyester resin just to give me a nice smooth surface. I'm hoping that that will give us something really firm for the adhesive to stick to. So we'll pop this down on here and we'll line up that gap with a cowling line should be about there and then if we push it down it should stick nicely with the double sided tape when I built the model I, I deliberately made these sections of the aircraft um, flat so that there was no compound curves so that because I, I knew I was going to put panels litho panels like this down on top of this so this edge here you can see there's quite a bit of a lip so what I'm going to do to to push that down I'm just using a, a sharpie the lid of a sharpie and I'm just gonna rub it to give myself a little bit of a curve Okay. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some tape. And I'm going to tape that bit down hard. So it thins up in there.
and I'm going to take that bit down hard. Okay. And a bit more in the next section. Now we may actually have to sand some of this tape off because where the super glue has been there's a good chance that it will have glued the tape to the surface too. Okay, but that's what we'll do. Well I'm pleased to say with a little bit of fiddling around, a lot more fiddling around than I'm used to, um, it, it has now stuck down and it's, it, it's on. Um, what I am going to do before I do the next panel, is I'm going to go and get some uh, zap, fin, and accelerator because I suddenly realised the accelerator I'm looking at here is foam safety kicker. It's totally different and doesn't work with with normal CA. So rather than use my rocket, which there is something called blaster, but my local shop doesn't doesn't stock it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop to the to the store now and get some some thin and some medium zap. Uh, and some zap kicker because uh, I know all those products together will work well and we'll we'll solve this once and for all because I've never had this this much trouble you know uh, gluing lithoplate down it's usually usually a really real easy process but that's that's gone down nicely and these are nice and sealed as well so they're not going to lift so um so I'll pop out get some glue and then we'll think about doing this top section that should be exciting here you can see I've positioned a, a template, a paper template, on, and I've marked off exactly where I want the lines to be. Now this front one is a really critical one, and it has to be just right because the cowl sits snug against it, and I want the cowl and this to be flush. So what I've done here to find that line is I've actually that polyester still a bit sticky. I've run a piece of tape, masking tape, just around that line there so that when you place this piece on top you can actually feel the ridge of the tape underneath and that's the way I've transferred the line to the um, to the edge of that. So I'm quite happy with that. What we'll do now is we'll transfer this pattern and I'm going to mount it mark again that that's the outer and I'll see if I can make the shiny side this way up this time it's much easier to see the rivets okay let's go and cut it out as you can see the trial fit is is looking good um, I was concerned that this whole section wasn't going to be flat enough that um, you know that there might be uh, some curves in there that maybe weren't right but I, again I worked really hard to make sure that was flat uh, and only in two dimensions rather than any sort of compound curves because on the full side full size Oster and full size light aircraft in general they didn't put compound curves into panels like this because they were being made quite simply with flat sheets of aluminium so you'll find on a lot of civilian aircraft the panels are actually flat it's um ap apart from the odd panel that may be has compound curves in it somewhere around the, the fairings and things like that but usually you'll find it's made up of flat panels so the trial fits great I've put little marks on there where the rivet lines line up from the side panels like the midpoint and, the, and what have you so what I'm going to do is I think I'll put a line of rivets down the middle a line of rivets across here and then fore and aft and then along the edges okay so I'll pop the rivets in and then we'll come back over and have another look Put a pencil line along there. I think that's where we'll have some rivets. A line along here. We'll have rivets. Here 
In the drawing world, we have these, which are quite useful. So what I'm going to do is just basically set up a similar curve to this one here on this flexible artist's, I don't know what they're called, um, but anyway, very useful. So I'll copy that curve there, as close as, as near as damn it, and then I'll move it to there, and then that's the line I'll draw. And that'll give us a rough idea of how we're going to do this. I think we'll also put one in about here. So on this one, we're looking at about one centimetre gap, so I think we can get two in there. <coughs> this front edge also needs a line. And if you remember, we, we did sort of copy that one to get that one. So So between there and there, I think we can probably go half and half again, half and half again. This one, not quite enough, so we'll go thirds. This one obviously should be thirds again. This one is, we've decided half and half again. It's the same again in here, half, half, half. In here, there'll be one right on the apex, and another one in there bit tight but so in there we can go half half again a bit tight together but we'll put these quite close I think half 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 again same in here half 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 and in this one we did one two three four we did so half it quarter it the other quarter the one on that dot one on that apex obviously, quarter, quarter, half, quarter, quarter, again half, quarter, quarter, and then along the back, one in the middle of there, half it, quarter it, quarter it again. So we've added all the rivets, I'm now just adding sections of the carpet tape. I'm going to leave the very edges and I'm going to stick those down with, with zap and uh, I now have some, some zap uh, and some zap kicker. So uh, if we have similar sort of problems to those that we saw yesterday, we should be able to surmount them. Well, that's the plan. That's a bit short, never mind. And this final piece should do it, I think. And there we go. Okay, now comes the bit I have been dreading. What I've done is I've put a little mark 
on this stick. It tells me exactly how far back to go. And there's a little line on here. And then there's a line there on which I align it. Now, I get one shot at this. A really <laughs> seriously one shot. Um, so I have got to get it right. And I think there it is. Now I'm just going to put it down the middle. I think that's it. <clears throat> Fingers crossed and then we'll roll it down to the sides. And that side is looking lovely. Okay, so I'm really pleased with that. So if that side's lined up, then this side should also line up. And it has. As you can see, the double-sided tape holds it down, but not right at this final edge, which is kind of to be expected. I was dreading that. I'm so relieved. Now it's not quite perfect. It could have gone half a millimeter further forward on this side, but it's perfect on that side, so I'm not going to worry about that. This can come off now, because that's set the distance so that I can get inside there to, to glue that flange. This is potentially a, a problem area because that's where oil and rubbish from this oil burning thing at the front is going to push oil under there. So we need to seal that really well. So that's good. That can come off now, having done its job. So there we go. I'm going to go and open my zap and then we'll feed some zap into this seam along here and especially along these edges well i hope you found that video interesting litho plate is a very useful tool in the scale model builders armory it may be getting a little bit difficult to get hold of nowadays as there are more and more digital printers around and less that are actually doing it the old-fashioned way of printing on plates but if you do an ebay search you may be lucky and if you go through your local yellow pages or whatever uh, online based version of it and see if you've got any lithographic printers anywhere near you they're usually quite happy to just give you the old sheets if you've enjoyed this video please click subscribe and set the alarm so that you'll be notified of future videos